Hey there, guys. I wanted to drop in real quick to talk to you about a brand new offer that I've put together just for you. It truly is going to revolutionize the way that you do business. I am offering a 90 minute strategy session that's also going to give you a visual roadmap that will guide you over the next six months to be able to accomplish any author goal you want to make happen. So here's the thing we all need some one on one guidance sometimes. And the whole idea behind this is to give you the one-on-one personalized experience that you're really craving and get you on the road to your greatest success, right? That's all we really want for you. So if you're curious about how this is going to work, head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash visual map and learn more about it today. Welcome to the Author Revolution podcast, where change is not just embraced, it's celebrated. I'm Carissa Andrews, international best-selling author, indie author coach, and your navigator through the ever-evolving landscape of authorship. Are you ready to harness the power of your mind and the latest innovations in technology for your writing journey? If you're passionate about manifesting your dreams and pioneering new writing frontiers, then you're in the perfect place. Here, we merge the mystical woo of writing with the exciting advancements of the modern world. We dive into the realms of mindset, manifestation, and the transformative magic that occurs when you believe in the impossible. We also venture into the world of futuristic technologies and strategies, preparing you for the next chapter in your author career. Every week, we explore new ways to revolutionize your writing and publishing experience. From AI to breakthrough thinking, this podcast is your gateway to a world where creativity meets innovation. Whether you're penning your first novel or expanding your literary empire, whether you're a devotee of the pen or a digital storyteller, this podcast is where your author revolution gains momentum. So join me in this journey to continue growth and transformation. It's time to redefine what it means to be an author in today's dynamic world. This is the Author Revolution Podcast, and your author revolution starts now. Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Author Revolution podcast. Oh, I am so excited to talk about this topic today. It's <laughs> It's been on my mind for a while, and it's one that kind of cycles back around for me personally. And so I know that it's going to resonate with you as well, especially if you are an indie author who really desperately wants to have their author career take off, who really wants to have a full-time author career established, who wants to make money, obviously, from the books and the worlds that they write. And this concept that I want to talk about is really, in a sense, kind of a paradox. And it's one that this Virgo mind doesn't always grasp, even though, even though I know, like on an intellectual level, on a soul level, this is what is required in order to make progress. But yet I still struggle with it. And maybe it's a little bit of that strategic. I like to have my mind active. But the concept is letting go to grow, right? Letting go, letting go of the obsessive focus on success, letting go of the need to please, letting go of this over obsessive desire to see results immediately. Because a lot of that stuff is really just adding layers of resistance on top of the desire to achieve. And what's happening is when it's not coming about, when it's not happening as quickly as we want it to, or we think it should, or all of those things, now we get discouraged, right? And so then adds a little bit more resistance, adds a little bit more of that discord into our energy and into like the desire to push forward. And honestly, it can cause a lot of contention between you and your author career, you and your books. And that's not the vibe, guys. That is not the vibe when it comes to having that beautiful, wonderful author career that is, you know, giving us all of the things that we want. It's supporting us. It is providing for us. It's fulfilling that part of our creative mind that just brings so much sparks of joy to us. So when we're trying to kind of juggle both, trying to get that success up and running, And we're also trying to earn money from this thing that really brings us joy in a creative kind of way. It creates this, I don't know, this this feeling of, it's almost like a trap, I guess I could say. It's like a trap that we fall into when we start to over-obsess on success. 
And so we end up doing things like blocking ourselves from creativity and the the energy that brings creativity. Because when we're in a place of resistance and our thoughts and our energy is at a lower vibration, we're not gaining access to those, you know, inspired action moments. We're not open to the universal energies that give us that like whoosh of excitement when a new idea comes out. And then of course we're pushing ourselves into burnout and we're doing things to the point where we're not healthy in our drive for success. And now getting what we want is not the issue. Let me be clear, like we can manifest anything we want. But the second we start adding that obsession into it, the second we start getting into the point where resistance is adding to the mix, that's where we have to drop the whole thing. That's where we, we like, especially if you're feeling like, why isn't this working? This should be working. This, this needs to be working. That's when you need to let go <laughs> and start focusing on something else. And let me give you an example of what this looks like. So for me, I think last year towards the end, I was definitely pushing myself towards burnout. There were a lot of things I was trying to accomplish. It wasn't so much about the success of it. Although I think if I am truly honest with myself, you know, I want the rom-com pen name to succeed. I want it to do really well once people understand it's out there, once the books start going and gaining traction. I, I want to see that for sure. But it was also, I think, the desire to not let anyone down. I had a lot of, you know, irons in the fire, so to speak. I had a lot of projects that I was going through, a lot of updates that I was making. You know, it was Christmas, so we had all of that nonsense on top of it all. So I, I definitely got into a place of burnout with all the things I was trying to tweak or to, you know, start or create or finish up or wrap up or uh, all the things. And so when January hit and we had other things like kids being sick and our furnace went out and all of the stuff. And then on top of it, you know, in Minnesota, I start to get seasonal affective disorder. And so it, I start to get a little bit anxious about all that. It's like I knew I was heading headlong into some psychological issues if I didn't just drop it, if I didn't just let it go. And it all kind of came to a head last week, last Wednesday, actually, where I was just like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't continue this process of doing all the things and, and making all the magic happen. I need to just take a day to just read, to just like disengage, to just not even... <laughs> I <laughs> like to just let things go. And that's what I did. I spent the entire day Wednesday just reading. I was reading the first Crescent City book from Sarah J. Moss. Finished the book that day because I was reading <laughs> the book all day long. And when I woke up on Thursday morning, the weight that had been on my chest, this pressure that had been in my head, like with all the things I felt like I had to do, had subsided. And the reason I think that happens is because the momentum of all the pressures that I was allowing to, you know, dictate my day, my life, my mind, they were able to lessen themselves just a little bit, right? I was able to negate some of that negative impact of my mindset on my creativity, on my mental health, on my overall quality of life. I was able to just kind of let it go for a bit and and surrender that control, trusting that things are going to be fine. I can take one day to relax, one day to get into a more receptive state of mind, and all will be well. I just had to drop it for for just a little bit. Now, when we do this, there are so many benefits, like I said, to this approach, because it includes things like reducing stress. Uh, I'll tell you what, it was a lot less stressful sitting down with my cup of coffee all day or my tea, whichever one I was drinking at the time, and immersing myself into the very intricate world in Crescent City. I mean, it's it's amazing how much stress is lessened, even though you're reading about things like, you know, battles and like demons coming into the planet, whatever. It's like, it was fine. Like I could be there and no problem. But my real life, my reality, I needed a break. But in addition to that, you know, when you do things like that, it, it can increase your creativity. And I felt that and I'll explain that in a second. And it's also providing you like a, with a better connection, I guess, to your authentic creative self. So here's what happened. I, I had that day off. I just and it literally was not intended. Like I had a list of things I was planning on doing. 
And I sat down that morning and my husband, Colin, went off to work. He had to work that day outside the house. And I just couldn't find myself getting up off the couch. Like I was just like, it's not going to happen today. Like it's just not going to happen. <laughs> and very rarely does something like that happen. I work on and off all week long. And so, I mean, my hours aren't super crazy or anything. And I do take time off on the weekends. But the if I find something that calls to me, I'll still do it. Like even if it's a Saturday, even if it's a Sunday, I'll still, you know, find myself in the office or I'll find myself playing around with something that has to do with either my books or author revolution or whatever. But what happened with that day by taking that one day and just saying screw it to everything was I got a really cool new fantasy series that kind of downloaded into my brain. And I'd like to say that in part, it's because I spent so much time in Sarah J. Moss's world. And it kind of triggered some things that were kind of brewing in the back of my mind before that with some of the other things I've been reading, like with A Course in Miracles and my ideas on perception. And so it's like they're all kind of blending together. And so this new world kind of locked into place. And so on Thursday, I started mapping it out so that when I'm done with Accidental Alpha, I can kind of hop into this place where I've designed, you know, certain characters, I've written down what the series premise would be, I've gone through all of the things that I teach in like, the plan your series challenge in in four books, five days, because I can do it quickly, then I can understand what it is, map out the series, and have it waiting there ready for me. So I don't forget anything, right? And I don't think I will, because it was such an inspired, like, whoosh of insight when it came through when it was like downloaded into my brain. And so I was really excited about that. But then I, I have a, a more enlivened like excitement about getting into Accidental Alpha again. I have two books left to plan for this series, and I'm going to be starting writing very soon, probably within the next week or so. And so I'm excited about doing the same thing now for that series, like planning it out, getting the rest of it finished. Some of that is already done. I know I have certain ideas in my head. I kind of did a series premise earlier on. But now I'm digging into those last two books, like I'm going to map them out and I'm excited to get there again, where had you asked me that question in the middle of December, I would have been like, I'm not even thinking about that right now. That's not even like on my radar, Ugh. <laughs> you know, like, oh, no, I'm still doing my rom-com right now, right? I got all these things. And I wasn't even in 2023 really feeling the vibe of fantasy, if I'm truly honest. And I think I talked about that a little bit on the show as well, because I kind of burnt myself out with the ideas of urban fantasy and paranormal fantasy and just needed a break from it. I needed to write something different. I needed to focus on something different for a bit. And again, it's that letting go to grow. Like I had to let it go, let the momentum of what I felt was necessary for the books, what I thought has to happen in those books, what I thought had to be for that type of book, all that stuff. I wanted to set it aside and come at it with a fresh perspective. And when we do that, it is so amazing the clarity that can come. But when you're in it, when you're when you're in that cycle, when you're in that over obsessive compulsion to succeed, you can't see what you won't allow in, right? Because your thoughts are only giving you the perception bias. They're only bringing you things that are fulfilling what you already believe to be true. And in order to have better feeling thoughts, in order to have clearer insights, in order to have that inspired action and guidance, sometimes we need to quiet that nonsense down. And that's where meditation and hypnosis really helps, but also where letting go helps, right? We need to, we need to know when we're reaching that breaking point and trust when you have a moment of just clarity of this is not going to happen today. I'm going to sit down and <laughs> I'm going to read and I'm not going to get up from this couch all day long. Trust that that's okay, that it's not going to be an everyday thing. It's not going to be like, oh, crap, now like I'm, I'm sinking into a depression that's going to last forever. That wasn't the case. And it never is for me. Like if I, if I hit that wall, if I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I have been doing too much. I need to just stop. It's usually a day maybe two at a push, but I can only think of one time in the past like five years that that's ever happened, which is weird. You know, a lot of people take two days off all the time. I personally enjoy so much of what I do that I don't feel like it's a hassle. 
you know, to keep going or to keep thinking about some of these things or to enjoy some of the processes of stuff. And when I start to feel like it's a burden, when I start to feel like, oh, I really don't want to have to do this thing, that's where I start to take notice, right? That's where I've trained my conscious brain to trigger myself and go, ooh, okay, I'm, I'm entering a burnout phase because I don't even want to answer this email, right? Something simple. Like it could just be like, hey, you know, this is, we've set up your, I don't know, cover reveal. What do you want to do next? Like, and I'll just like stare at the email. Like, I really don't want to respond to this, even though it's fun, even though it's exciting, even though it's the next step. It's like, I know something has to give. But of course, I am a tenacious, insane person at times. (laughs) I like to keep pushing my boundaries. So I don't always listen the first time those like signs start, you know, cropping up in my head. And I have to prove to myself that, no, I can handle this. I can do this thing. I can keep on going. And eventually the universe or who knows, my guides, my angels, my brain just has a snap and it goes, nope, not today. (laughs) Have you ever had those types of days? Oh, man. I. I'm grateful for them, but at the same time, I wish I would notice the signs sooner and adhere to what I already know to be true. Do you feel that? Ah, oh, man. So all of this to be said, like we talk a lot about manifestation on this podcast. We talk a lot about future casting, about using tools that are going to help us to be you know, better at what we do, to succeed faster. But it all comes back around to this concept that our minds, our perception, our thoughts are really what keep this ball rolling. And it's what keeps us from attaining our success or it's what propels us toward it. And so like we're going to be kicking off the Millionaire Author Challenge here the first week in February. So February 5th through the, what is that, the 9th? Yeah. So February 5th through the 9th, we're going to be having the next live launch of the Millionaire Author Challenge. Now, this is four days where we're playing around with the concept of what our thoughts bring to us, how we get to change and shift, how we deliberately get to manifest our reality. And there's so many games in there that were inspired from Abraham Hicks and from other places that I have used myself and I love the concepts of. So for me, as I'm kind of coming out of this burnout, as I'm kind of inching my way toward more creativity again and wanting to embrace that, I am going to also be doing the challenge myself personally again. It's so weird. Like when I create things, sometimes I almost feel as if I've channeled it because I forget all of the good insights that were in each of the lessons. And when I rewatch them, I'm like, dang, yeah, yeah, I know that. Of course I know that. (laughs) Like what? It's so weird. But it reminds me of what I should be doing as well. So it's not just you. And we, we all do cycle back around, you know, learning and relearning these lessons until they have become truth to us. Remember, beliefs are just thoughts we continue to think. And so the more we reintegrate ourselves with these thoughts, the more that we remind ourselves that this is how we get to shift, how we get to be, how we get to think the more it becomes true for us, the more it becomes our operating system. And now next week, I'll be talking with Tammy Tyree. She's actually coming on board the Millionaire Author Challenge this year. So we're adding a new layer to the challenge. It's going to be really helping us get into that subconscious aspect of our minds, the programming that dictates what we believe about what we get to have, right? How we get to be, how we get to receive money, how we get to grow. And so Tammy's coming in. She's going to be providing new hypnoses that have never been seen before on any of our programs. And part of it's because Tammy came in after the challenge had already been created. So the challenge had been running. I think I had done it twice. And she took the challenge. And that's when we started having conversations about Millionaire Author Manifestation. And she came on board that course, providing her incredible hypnoses for the Millionaire Author Manifestation 12-week program. And she's since obviously helped with the Abundant Author Activation, the Abundant Author Alignment. She is incorporated into all of our uh, Your Future Self, like mind magic workouts in that membership. So she's everywhere when it comes to the manifestational side of things, because 
I find it so important that we dig into our subconscious mind and root out the ideas, those limiting beliefs, those notions that tell us we can't have, be, do anything we want. And we all have those. We all do, including Tammy, including myself. We're all working through these types of thoughts, these types of things, you know, author imposter syndrome, all the stuff that we are trying to overcome in addition to having a successful author career, in addition to writing some incredible books, in addition to being as creative and potent and powerful as we can be. And so it's going to be so much fun to see how, you know, how this course or this challenge has always been good, but it's going to up level now bringing Tammy in and you know, having her hypnosis involved into this challenge. Now, I'll be probably putting in a couple of meditations as well that are brand new. And the reason for all of this, like I said, is that there's just that extra layer helping us to get out of our own way, to no longer have to like be focusing on this obsession, but instead be having fun with it. You know, that that really became clear to me a couple of years ago when I was no longer having fun just with any of the stuff I was doing. And I kept hearing a voice like in the back of my head, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> like I just, I trusted it. It was like, you need to have more fun. You need to have more joy in your author career. You need to have more fun. And so I started looking for ways to bring more fun in, to gamify the the process, to, you know, play around with my reading, to do different things that just made me feel like I was having a good time with my writing or with my careers in general, because I needed that, right? I needed those mindset shifts and all the daily habits that then supported the new approaches. And what's really cool is like in the Millionaire Author Challenge, should you choose to join this year, and if, if you're in it already, like if, if you've been a part of it and you have access to it, you, there's nothing you have to do. You have access to it already, lifetime access. But we will be putting it on sale. So rather than it being $297, which is what it's at normally throughout the year, we'll be dropping it for the live launch to $27. So make sure you check it out, but use the coupon code MAC2024, okay? And that'll get you the the correct pricing. So MAC for Millionaire Author Challenge 2024. And it will take off, I think it's $270 off of the price and you'll get it for $27. Sign up for it. And all you have to do is head over to millionaireauthorcoach.com forward slash challenge to find it. And you should have access to it there. And everything will kick off on the 5th of February. So if you're brand new and have never been a part of the challenge before, just hang tight because it'll be locked until February 5th. And then everything will start to unlock as we go forward. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> but regardless, like, I just want you to know, for me, I, I don't know, letting go is very hard. Like, it's always been a difficult, I don't know, concept's not the right word, but a difficult thing for me to actually do. Like, even if the concept in my brain is easy, even if I understand it, letting go personally is hard. Like, whether it be you know, understanding and letting go of a person or a, a pet or understanding and letting go of a project that I feel like isn't working or letting go of a pen name or letting go of characters or even having characters do the same thing. Like in my Windhaven Witches series, Autumn is the same way. Like she has a hard time letting go. And that's part of the thing that she has to overcome in order to, I guess, become what she does in that final book. And it's a part of me for sure. And it's something that I am conscious of, but I still go unconscious with it. And at times I have to remind myself that it's okay to take those breaks. It's okay to have that <laughs> Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday day, whatever, where you're just sitting on the couch and you're just like ignoring the entire world and just enjoying the book or enjoying a story, enjoying someone else's take on the world, enjoying someone else's imagination. I think that's how and why books are so powerful. So think about that too. Like if you ever think about your author career and like, are you actually impacting anybody? Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Had Sarah J. Moss not written this gigantic monolithic book that's 804 pages and <laughs> had I not read 500 of them that day, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think I would have been doing a whole lot else. I probably would have been 
working. I probably would have been going forward, but I had already read the first 300 pages. I was invested in the world and the characters. And so when I sat down that day, I was like, I am not leaving this world. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to let it carry me. And so it did. And your books do the same thing for other readers. That's how powerful they are. I mean, wow. Don't take that lightly. So as we conclude this episode, I really want to, you know, just remind you that it's okay to have an, a relaxed, open mindset about your author career because it is going to help you attract success faster. You know, when we when we have an idea of what we want and we put it into the universe, remember the answer is always yes, it's instantaneous. And so if we have a desire and we know and have decided that's what we are going to go after, the answer is already yes. So we don't have to control it all. We don't have to control the when. We don't have to control the how. We don't have to control any of it. We just have to move forward trusting that that is going to unfold and envelop us into the reality that we really want. And so manifesting can be easy then. Manifesting our author careers can be easy. We can be relaxed and still enjoy everything. It's all working out for us. And that includes having that day off. It includes having, you know, a, a mindset of, you know, I don't have to work myself to the bone. I don't have to work every single day. It can include, like, I can, I can have success with one series. I can have success with one book. I can have success where I am right now today, no matter what. Like, all of these concepts, all of these thoughts are valid thoughts. They can all bring us to the success that we're desiring. And so the obsession is the problem. The obsession to succeed, the, the you know, bloodhound in us that tries all the things and, and keeps going, why is it not working? You know, this should be working by now. All of the things should be, you know, growing the way that I want them to grow. Why is it not working? Remember, those thoughts, why is it not working? is the vibration you're putting out there. It is the frequency that is bringing more of that to you. Your perception bias is showing you it's not working. And now all of a sudden you're resonating with the problem. You're not resonating with the solution. And the best of us can go down that road if we're not careful. <laughs> like if we're not paying attention to how our thoughts have really taken a turn. And sometimes it can sneak up on you because they are, you know, patterns of thought or patterns of belief that have been around for a really long time. And you can up-level yourself. You can get to the next level and they still need to be healed. They still need to be healed at a deeper level. You need to, you know, work through those thoughts again and again. And I think that's why the Millionaire Author Challenge and the Millionaire Author Manifestation courses are so powerful because even when you up-level you can always heal it more, heal it better, heal those thoughts to the point where you can really take on the mantle of millionaire author in a way that like lights you up, in a way that feels natural, in a way that has more meaning and more depth than even those words, right? And that's what I'm always working towards. That that peaceful, like aligned, centered author version of myself or person, you know, like author is just another part of this. But person, my, like my identity, I want to be that peaceful, aligned person who walks through the world feeling and knowing and trusting that it's all working out and that I have support, whether it be in reality in this place, you know, wh whether it's people I hire or people I work with or contract with or whatever, or whether it is, you know, like my, my spiritual team backing me up. That's all important. It's all a part of this process. Well, guys, hopefully this was helpful. I know it was kind of a, a different podcast episode, but I really thought I, I needed to share just how, just how being in that, you know, obsession can dismantle your pathway to success for a bit and, and and puts you on a derailment in essence for a little bit. It doesn't have to be forever. You know, like it wasn't for me forever. I could just feel like I was on the wrong track. I needed to get back on the right track. And so of course I started obsessing about like the problem side of the stick. Like how do I fix this? Oh, how did I end up here? How do I get out of it? Even though logically I knew like I needed to just stop. <laughs> but I didn't. I kept going and kept trying to get all the things done. And I didn't surrender my to-do list as well as I should have. 
there were days that I was like, okay, this doesn't really need to be done. I'll take take it off uh, another day. But I, I didn't I didn't do what I did last Wednesday. I'll tell you that. So it just is what it is. And sometimes we are just stubborn. And I am definitely one of those people. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you're interested in signing up for the Millionaire Author Challenge, the doors are open to enrollment. And it's going to be, like I said, taking place February 5th through the 9th. Head over to millionaireauthorcoach.com forward slash challenge. Use the promo code MAC2024 to get it on sale and sign up. But it will be a live launch. So we're going to have, you know, every single day, there's going to be the the lessons. There are downloads. There are sheets to work through. There are games to play. There will be hypnoses or meditations. And then we'll end on a final like call where we talk about everything that we've learned, talk about manifestation as we know it, and encourage you know all of us to reach higher, to be better, to move forward through the rest of February, really loving what we do, loving our books, loving the direction of our careers, loving everything that gets to happen because we are in control of it in conjunction with, in co-creation with all that the universe provides us. So I think it's pretty awesome. And I know for me, it's already filling me with this sense of anticipation and the sense of, I can't wait to do this again. And, you know, get out of the rut that I kind of get myself into when I go into those obsession modes, when I go into those uh, momentums <laughs> where I can't quite uh, see the the light at the tunnel. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to it as well and looking forward to just seeing, you know, all of my students every year, every time we run this challenge, it's so fun to see when their eyes light up and they go, oh my gosh, I didn't know it could be this good. I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know this was a part of the process. And seeing the, you know, the alignment and seeing the epiphanies happening. That's my favorite part. I absolutely adore it. It's just, it's, it's so freaking great. And when we bring in Tammy, because of her hypnoses, she has brought a level to all of this stuff that is just, it blows me away every single time. Having her a part of this process has been truly like divine guidance. It has been like, I don't even know, it, it, it must have been soul contracted or something. It was just amazing to have her come into this process. So I hope you'll sign up. I hope you'll be a part of it this year. We're going to kick it off, like I said, in February. We're going to have so much fun. And then later on the end of the month, we're going to kick off the 12-week Millionaire Author Manifestation course. So you can also you know, hang tight for that. There will be, if you get into the wait list for it, which I encourage, you will be getting a discount code for that as well. So like if you want to join our 12-week course where we are you know, talking about manifestation every single week, there's a ton on more hypnoses and meditations and downloads and games and oh lord all the things but then we have weekly calls every single week at the end of the week we're going to get together we have a discussion about what we learned Tammy does a group hypnosis right then and there and it's so powerful every single week so the alignment that happens the shift that happens in authors it, it's phenomenal like it is it's some spectacular stuff and every week I have like chills. It's just amazing. And with the way that Tammy works, she's a Reiki master as well. The Reiki master in me, like I feel the energy coming through <laughs> when she's doing her hypnosis. It's incredible. So if you want to be in on all that, get on the wait list. It's going to be on the show notes page. So you can head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 218. And just scroll like down to the bottom of the screen. It'll be there. Sign up for the wait list for that because you will get a coupon code when we do pre-launch on that as well. Okay. So there you have it. There's so much fun stuff waiting for you the second you let go of all of this obsession to succeed. Your success is right around the corner. It's inevitable. You know that, right? It is inevitable. But you just have to get out of your own way to see it, to realize it, to have it come into this version of reality. So it's up to you. Are you feeling like it's time to let go? Are you feeling like it's time to finally let go of the resistance and just allow things to be easy? I hope so. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your week. Find some things to let go of your to-do list. You know, cross a couple things off. They don't need to be done. There's a, there's a few. You know there's a few. I know there's a few. <laughs> I'm going to let go of a few of them myself. Let them go and just trust that everything is working out in your favor. 
no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, it's all working out for you. All right. So go forth and start your author revolution. Okay, indie author, Carissa Andrews with Author Revolution here. We need to have a chat. I know you want to build a sustainable long-term author career, but you can't do it just by wishing for it. It would be nice, yes, but alas, you gotta do the work. By that I mean you need to reframe the way you look at your author business so that you can write and publish more frequently. With Rapid Release Roadmap, my signature online course, I'll help you learn not only how to make writing and publishing four books a year seem easy, but I'll help you master your prolific author mindset so that you can clear away all the negative self-talk that's holding you back. Trust me, I have been there. To learn more about Rapid Release Roadmap, head over to rapidreleaseroadmap.com. Over there, I'll give you all the insights on what you'll find inside the course. Plus, I walk you through all of the bonuses you're going to get based on the payment option you choose. And yes, there are some good ones in there, even if I say so myself. Once again, head over to rapidreleaseroadmap.com to learn more and sign up today.